In this video I'm going to show you how to make this simple Undertale style text box. Let's create a new scene. Start with the canvas layer so you can put it above all the other scenes. Call this text box. Give it a margin container. Go bottom wide. Raise it up a bit. Give it a panel. So this panel is going to be our text box UI. So go flat, black background, white border, about two width, save this text box. Come back to the margin container and give it some margin so it's not hugging uh, the screen wall. Give it another margin container and give that a panel just so we could see what we're actually changing in terms of the margin. So give it some margin there and then an HBox container for the horizontal elements of the text box, which is going to be the symbol, the text, and then another symbol. And give it a label, call it text, and then give it a font, dynamic font, font. Uh, I picked this font off of the website BitFontMaker2, which has some great pixel art fonts. And there we go, we have some text. Duplicate this a couple times. Um, I'll give this one the asterisk, and I'll give this one a V character, and I'll call this start symbol, or I'll just call it start. I'll call this end, and let's make, let's go to the size flags. So let's have this text expand that way and expand vertically. This one, size flags, we can go that's fine, as long as it's near the top. And this one, we can go uh, shrink end. And now, let's remove this panel so that we just have the white text over the black background. So this is the base text box right here. Um, let's give it some placeholder text. So one problem is we don't want this to extend that far. So we'll go ahead and auto wrap it and clip it as well, and as long as we vertically fill it, then it should be good. And then I'll just quickly adjust this so that it's about two lines tall. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, quick, quick issue that might happen is um, if we have this current situation and we don't have this end thing, then that's the presence of it is going to affect the text box. So going to go ahead and just set these rects min size to be equal to its current size so that when we change this it doesn't affect the text itself. Okay, so this is our text box UI and now I'm going to go over the scripting part. So create a new script um, and first off we don't always want the text box to be visible, we want to hide it when there's no text on the screen. So I'm going to create a function called hide text box and I'll um, rename this margin container um, text box container and I'll create references to everything that we're going to need to manipulate in this script. So text box container, the start symbol, the end symbol, uh, just called it end and then the label. Okay, so when we hide the text box, we're setting our start symbols text to be empty, setting the end symbols text to be empty, setting the label to be empty. And so if we call this function in ready, then it's just an empty text box, and then we'll actually hide the text box container itself. So this is going to be the default state when there's no text. We want everything empty and hidden. And I'll just quickly make a show text box, which is just going to be used when we actually want text to start appearing. So when that's true, then we want to show the container and show the asterisk. Okay. So let's get some text um, added to the text box. So I'll create a function called add text and I'll pass in um, some text. So let's create this function, add text, pass in the next text, and we'll set the label's text to be the next text. 
and show the text box. So let's see what happens now. We should see the text. Okay, great. But we don't want the text to just appear out of nowhere. We want the text to slowly be read through the text box, sort of like this. So we can use this percent visible variable and tween it in order to get it from 0 to 1 over a certain amount of time. So I'm going to create a tween and add it to the text box node. And when we add text, I'm going to start interpolating. So we're going to interpolate the property of the label percent visible from 0 to 1 over some amount of time. Now the amount of time is going to be dependent on the number of characters in the text box. It's not going to be some fixed amount. I'm going to create a constant called character read rate and set it to 0 0.5. And we're going to take the length of the text and multiply it by the read rate. And then I'm just going to pick some generic uh, tweening properties and start the tweening start. So let's see how that looks. Well, that's incredibly slow, but it works, which is good. So we'll speed it up. Nice. So that's working. Um, that's great. And we also want to have the end symbol appear once the text finishes being read. So when the tween is complete. I'll just connect a signal there. We'll go ahead and have the end symbols text be that V. So here's how it looks. Great. Now when this happens, we want to press enter to have the text box disappear because it's finished being read. So we're getting to the territory where we actually want to start thinking about the states that the text box is in because we only want to be able to press enter once the text is in its finished state, not while it's being read. In fact, while it's being read, if we press enter, we want it to finish reading and go right to the finished state. So managing those is great for using a finite state machine. So these are the three states that the text box is going to be in. So in the ready state, it's ready to receive text, but it currently is not displayed on the screen. We add text to it. The text box is visible. We go into the reading state. We start reading text. Um, once the uh, tween finishes or the percent visible is 1, all the text is on the screen, we enter the finished state where we wait for the enter press to go back to the ready state. So let's create a state enum to manage those three states and then a variable to manage what the current state is. And then I'm going to create a sort of uh, quality of life function called change state where we'll set the current state to be whatever state we want to change to and then I'll also create a match function which is going to just go through the states and print um, what state we're currently in for tracking surface uh, purposes. But first, we're also going to want to manage what state we're in in the process function. So in the change state function, I'm just going to print um, what state we're changing to. So in this case, it's state.ready. Here it'll be reading. Here it'll be finished. And then I'm also going to print what state we start in, starting state, so that we can track this. OK, cool. So when are we changing states? So we start in the ready state. When we add text, we're going to go into the reading state. When we finish reading, when the tween finishes, we're going to go into the finish state. Let's see what this looks like when we just run it through real quick. OK. So if you look at the console, our starting state is ready. We go to the reading state, and then we go to the finished state. Once we're in the finished state, we can now look for pressing enter. So if input.isAction is just pressed UI accept, which is mapped to enter by default, then we know that we can go back to the ready state and start receiving text again. In addition, um, I think we should hide the text box. So let's see what that looks like. Cool. Press enter, text box is gone. Now what happens if we press enter while it's reading? It should skip to the end of the text, display everything, and then go into the finished state. 
So let's add that here. So if we press enter wallets reading, we can go ahead and just immediately set the text visible to be one. And then let's just stop the tweening and display the end symbol and change the state to finished. So let's interrupt it. I interrupted it, it went straight to the end and we're in the finished state. Now one of the problems with this design is that it depends on being fed one piece of text at a time, which means something else has to manage you know, when this text box finishes in order to add the next text. But it would be nice if we had a queue for managing the text where we could add a bunch of text all at once and then have it go through those texts one at a time. So let's do that. Let's let's uh, refactor the code and create this text queue to hold multiple texts. So I'm going to create the queue text function, which is going to um, just add text to this text queue that we're going to manage locally. And in our instead of um, adding text, I'm just going to call this display text, and we're going to get the next text from the text queue. And in the ready state, we're just going to we're going to actually look for if the text queue is not empty, then we'll call display text. And instead of add text, we're going to do queue text. And we're going to queue a bunch of text here. We're going to do first text queued up. Let's try second text, third, fourth. Let's see how this works. Okay. Oh, fourth text queued up. It's not what we want. Text queue dot pushback. Next text is pop front. Okay, so we were actually popping the end of the queue. We want to pop the front of the queue. There we go. First text queued up. Second text queued up. Third text queued up for and it's it seems to be stuttering a little bit. I think we could probably fix that um, by setting let's see yeah let's set the percent visible to zero before we get the tweening started so that yeah that looks a little bit better cool and uh, yeah I mean that's pretty much it just for uh, flavor let's add a little town here and put some believable texts. Something silly. Um, why do we not look like the others? Because we are free assets from open game art. And then thanks for watching. Okay, <laughs> wandered. And yeah, there's our text box. You can see all the states it's going through at the bottom. And yeah, hope that was helpful. Thanks.